Okay, everyone, we'll go ahead and get started. We have Coach here, and our first question will go to Greg Hunter. So, Coach, let's just start general. Um, the last okay. week, what have you guys been doing in practice? Any injuries to report? Well, you know, what's been happening? Throwing it around a lot, Greg. Kind of uh, haven't been real. Hasn't been a great week for our, our passing abilities. Uh, we're just trying to we're trying to get ready for obviously Texas A and M and and what they do and uh, trying to just keep getting better, uh, keep getting better our execution offensively and obviously defensively. Justin Jackson. Hey, Coach, kind of going off the Texas A&M thing here, uh, I guess it was reported a little earlier today that Ohio State has dropped out of that tournament. Um, not, you know, sure how that might affect you guys or not, but uh, is there any chance at all that the tournament, uh, you know, gets canceled or, you know, you guys have to look elsewhere uh, to, to start the season? No, I just I, I just talked to the lady who runs the tournament after uh, – I found out that, that Ohio State had dropped out and, and she's already picked up another team. Okay. And uh, that will that will play Memphis in the second game of the day. So I, I, I think Justin, honestly, with um, the MTEs uh, being canceled in Florida, there's a lot of people looking to get in a good MTE. And this one, I mean, this one is, you're gonna play good quality people every game. So it's going to help. Are you allowed to say who that replacement team is, or is it too early? Or I don't know. I don't know okay. if I. I don't know if I am or not. Okay. Right. Probably. You want me to tell you? Sure. All right. The rest of you guys cover yours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's St. Mary's. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, Michael from WMOV. You guys were among the best teams in the nation defensively last year. How have things looked on that side so far? And can we expect anything new this year, kind of from the standpoint of pressing or different zone defenses or anything like that? Well, we're, we're just trying to get solid right now. Uh, I'm sure that we'll, we'll do some other things, but not at this point in time. We're just trying to, trying to get the fundamentals and, get the new guys and the guys that didn't get as much playing time, trying to make sure that they understand what we're trying to do. And I think, I think when we're really good, we, we do a great job of working in unison and that's what we're trying to work on, making sure everybody understands where the other guy's supposed to be and, and consequently where they're supposed to be. Ethan Bob. Hey, Coach. So a couple weeks ago, you said the Big 12 wasn't going to tell you about the conference schedule for a while. And then last week, they came out with the conference schedule. Did that surprise you how quick it was in any way? What are your thoughts on that? Well, they did tell us that it wasn't, it wasn't going to be out for a while. So uh, I don't know. I'm old, man. There's not a whole lot of surprises me anymore. John Antony. I had my ears covered. I didn't get that, Hugs. Um, what do you do to, to keep this thing from getting stale? Because you're, you're not going to play a game now for another three weeks. You don't have any exhibition games. You guys are you're going against yourself. Um, how, do you, how do you keep it where the guys are sharp and fresh and the practices are the way you want them? John, you know the answer to that. It's my effervescent personality. <laughs> They've been good, man. They, you know, here's here's the thing. You know, they have a day off. They're still in here. You know, they 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 love they love playing, and so, uh, you know, obviously, uh, voting day. You know, everybody's off. Nobody can and and. They, they're still coming in and getting shots uh, after they voted. So they're going to be in here regardless. So they, they enjoy being in here. When do you start digging into Texas A&M? 
Well, we already have. Yeah, I know. I saw their one of their bigs was on the Carl Malone list, so I just glanced at their roster. They got a lot of size. We got a lot of size, and and Buzz does a really good job. Um, you know, they had some young guys a year ago that. You know, it's it's kind of you don't know if you're supposed to shoot or not supposed to shoot or should I pass it here? And and when you got all those things going through your head, you don't uh, generally play t up to your ability. And and I think th they're much much better. They'll they'll have a much much better year this year. Last thing here, what what can you expect from those early games? I mean, obviously you got a veteran team, and you hear coaches talk, and they say people that are dealing with pandemics having a veteran team. It's probably helpful. You know, what, what are your expectations early on? Who said that? A uh, guy named Mike, Mike Carey. You ever heard, heard of him? Coach is women, man. That's different. <laughs> um, I don't I don't know. I, I Honestly, uh, I don't know if having a veteran team helps you or not. It's because we've – you know, we've never gone through this. We've, we've never gone through what we're, what we're going through. You know, generally you don't want a lot of interruptions and we've had nothing but interruptions, you know, from, from the, the testing and, and not that it's not, we, we need to do it. I, I think we all understand that we, we really need to do it. That's not a knock. It's just, it's reality. It's, it's, you can't get into any kind of, flow because you're constantly something comes up that that takes you out of the, the the flow so to speak but again i mean i think the 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 great thing for us is we have guys who love being in the gym so they're going to be in the gym whether we're in there or not Craig hunter bob what do you see from kedrian johnson uh, besides being good offensively in junior college he was also very good defensively in terms of stats is is he caught on to what you want him to do defensively yeah i mean it's a it's a process but uh he's getting better and better uh, he, you know he's talented he's a he's a very talented guy he's he's far and away the fastest guy on our team uh you know he can he can really get to the ball it's just a matter of, you know, him right now, he's thinking too much, and not really reacting. But he's a, he's a talented guy. He's going to be a really good player. We'll go to Nick from WVBA. Thank you for the Malone Award list. Uh, Oscar's on that list now, too. And uh, even aside from the, the two seasons and half of the year, what have you kind of seen from, from Oscar that, that makes you believe that, that he's close to playing even bigger roles for you guys uh, this year? Thank you. Nick, you were hard to hear, Coach. I think he was asking about uh, Oscar being named to the Malone Award watch list, and uh, what are you seeing from him this year? Uh. Well, I mean, I, I think all of those things are pretty much based on a year ago. Um, the, the people who had good years a year ago, obviously, are going to be named on those lists. And I think it, it, it's, a, it's a testament to what Oscar did and how impressive he was to people a year ago. And, you know, the challenge now is to continue to get better and, and continue to climb that list. Justin Jackson. Hey, Coach, um, obviously you're saying Kedrin's the fastest guy. Oscar's probably not going to like that too much. I think Oscar, Oscar, unless Oscar wants to lie to you, just bold face lie to your face, <laughs> Justin, he is faster than Oscar. <laughs> um, on, on, the, um, on Oscar a little bit and Derek, uh, you know, you went through last season – working on playing them together. And, you know, they both talked a lot last year about how they had to work out spacing and, and get used to playing with each other. And it was kind of a process for them. I'm just kind of wondering what you see from that process this year. Is it going to look, uh, you know, a lot different? Will they look more comfortable, I guess, playing together, I guess is the question. I think they've been a lot more comfortable because they, they play together in practice. Right. Those guys are generally on the same, on the same team, and, and you know they they play against they play against uh, the other our other bigs. 
So, which is good for our other bigs, but I think it's it's good for them. They're not, you know, they're not pounding on each other uh, every day. So, and they're and they're offensively, they're they're working together. So, I think it's a it's a win win. Just having those other bigs, you know, generally, you have two guys like that, and your next guy is six foot three, and skinny, you know. So. <laughs> Having having uh, the additional bigs that we have, I think gives us depth there, and they they bring some things to the table as well. So it's it's been good for us. So I mean, obviously going up against another opponent, their, their spacing then doesn't sound like it'll be as much of a concern then, as far as them finding the right space. I guess. I don't. I don't think that's the problem. I mean, them running into each other, trying to both get the same rebound at times is. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, their 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 understanding of of that is is has become pretty good. I think. Yeah. Okay, Cody Nesper. Hey, Coach. Um, just are you expecting to use as deep a rotation this year as you did last year? Or, I mean, is that something you can even, you know, make a determination on in the preseason, or do you have to kind of wait and see? Well, I'm hoping that it, that's a big advantage for us in this, this MTE when you're playing uh, three hard games in three days. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to play uh, a lot more people than what our opponent plays. And, and hopefully we'll be a little fresher and have uh, – a lot livelier legs. We'll go back to John. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, have you ever sat out a, a top 100 recruit like you did with JB? I know that was the plan was to do that. And the other question is, had you not, would he, would he have helped you last year, you think? I think he would have really helped us last year. He, he was uh, – he was one of our better offensive rebounders, I think, at the end of the year, and he, and he can make shots. I mean, JB, JB gets on a roll; he really makes shots, and, and he's got great. He's got uh, he, he he can shoot it from deep, but stretches the defense. Uh, he's he's got length and, and good feet, so he's going to be a good defender. Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's any doubt. You know, the way it turned out, you know, we we probably. We had it to do all over again, knowing what we know now, we wouldn't have, because it's going to get this year back anyways. Yeah. As as Justin so eloquently penned in the, uh, I was to say he could play six years. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean Justin, Justin had that in the paper. If you'd buy a paper, John, you'd know these things. <laughs> that that subs too much for me, man. <laughs> okay, Greg Hunter. Hey, Isaiah Cottrell, you, you've talked about his skill. Um, things you really need to work, him to work on uh, so he can get to where you want him to be? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is physicality, uh, which is it, – it's, uh, it, it's a huge difference from playing in high school and to playing at this level. But and, and then it's even a bigger challenge when you're playing against two guys like Derek and Oscar. Um, and so – but he's learning. He's learning. He's getting. He's getting more physical. He's become uh, much, much better as a rebounder. You know, and the great thing about Isaiah is he can step out and make shots. You know, you can't clog things up with him on the floor because he can step out and make shots. Michael Casaza. Hey, Bob. Um, going on your rotation. I believe you had mentioned earlier that earlier, maybe um, one or two weeks ago, that you were going to be kind of hesitant to use newcomers. So maybe that's Bridges, maybe that's Johnson, maybe that's uh, Isaiah, maybe that's just some combination of guys, Taj too. But um, are, do you have plans for when to use them, how to use them? Do you just not want to use them early because they don't have that exhibition, or is that evolving right now? No, I think we all want to win, Mike. But we're going to do what we need to do to win. Um, I mean, and I think obviously at this point in time, not having a scrimmage like we always were able to have and not having a, uh, an exhibition 
uh, with the money going to charity like we have had in the past, uh, it's uh, those guys aren't aren't getting any experience. They, the, those guys haven't taken a jump shot in the Coliseum yet. So uh, you know it's 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 going to depend on the opposition and 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 what it takes for us to win the game. But again, they they all bring something that we need. And and like I said, in Isaiah's case, Isaiah can step out and make shots that Derek and Oscar aren't going to be able to step out and make. Do we have any further questions? Uh, if you do, please use the raise hand feature. Okay, go ahead, Michael. Mike, my bad. Yep, yeah, my bad. I wasn't sure which one. That's my fault. Um, a, a bunch of coaches, different sports, talked about using um, kind of the spare time in the in the pandemic, the quarantine period, to revisit stuff and maybe devote attention to stuff that you would not normally have the time and the resources to. And you know, it could be a small area, a big area. Any type of that workshopping for you that was out of the ordinary that you probably wouldn't have looked at in a regular off season, but given your time this year, you did. You know. No, because I, I, ha I really I haven't had a lot of time. Like I, you know, I've done um, a bunch of virtual clinics, you know, for for different people and and different organizations. Uh, I'm on the NAC, NABC uh, board of directors, so I'm I'm on a call or that at least once a week. I'm on the rules committee, so I'm on you know, a call about that. I mean, I'm on, I'm on more committee. I don't know how I got on all these committees, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm on all these committees. And so I'm, I'm, uh, it, it really does keep you busy. And then, uh, you know, I, I, the guys are, have the great thing about this facility is the guys like being in here. So, and they eat in here and they, and they, you know, they obviously they work out and they lift. And so they're around all the time. So I get to spend time with them. So no, I'm not, I haven't had time to sit down and I really haven't wanted to, to be honest with you. I'm just kind of, um, I'm happy with uh, what we're doing, where we are. And, and, and I, and as you know, I've got a great staff. I've got a, a terrific staff. I mean, you don't get a better guy than Larry Harrison. Obviously, Eric playing for me. He he's got a he's got a pretty good idea of what we need done as well. And and then the, you know the rest of the crew. So I don't. I'm I'm taking. I, I've become an administrator, Mike. How about that? I never thought that ever happened. Okay, Greg Hunter. So, so, Bob, to follow along with Mike's question a little bit, what about recruiting uh, in this new world? A lot of restrictions on you, um, very different. Can you be at all successful in recruiting, doing what you have to do, all, almost all virtual? I think you have to be, don't you? I mean, there's, there's, there's guys uh, committing uh, all over the place, even though they're, you know, some of them are saying, um, that they, they want to actually come to campus, but um, they still commit, you know. So um, yeah, we, we've, we've been on a lot of, of, of these uh, virtual visits, and actually they're kind of neat. I mean, you know, you kind of get to you, – you do get to see campus and, and everything that we have here for, for – uh, students and student athletes. So I, you know, I, I just like to, I like to be able to sit down and talk to people face to face, you know, this, this, uh, this virtual thing is, uh, I think for the time being good, I hope it doesn't become a fixture in what we do. Okay. If there's no further questions, uh, Justin, you will have the last one. All right. Coach, I appreciate the plug earlier. Hey, hey, you know, Justin, I open that paper up and I go right to local. Uh, 
so I can turn the page on local and get to the sports and see what you're writing about on that day. <laughs> I'm I, I, kind of curious here, man, on, uh, you know, you look at the stats last year and, you know, it, it'll tell you that you guys were last in three-point shooting last year in the league. I also see, you know, you also have a team that forces a lot of turnovers, is the best in offensive rebounding. So you create a lot of points in other areas. But I'm just kind of curious on what you think you need from three-point shooting this year. Is that a stat that will tell a lot or maybe not something that you're concerned about as much because of the makeup of your team? I'm just kind of curious on where you think that mix might be this year. Well, I, I just saw something. I think, you must correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we shot 22% from three. Uh, a year ago and uh, that's not good enough obviously but, but you know what Justin I I wouldn't I wouldn't be afraid to put John McNeil in a three-point shooting contest with anybody in our league or anybody else's league he can really shoot the ball right Taz Taz struggled a year ago but he struggled because he the, the injury and then he got sick and you know he just didn't have a he just didn't have a, a, a good year, but it really wasn't his fault. By the time he kind of got going at the end of the year, they shut us down. But uh, he can shoot the ball. Uh, JB can shoot the ball. I mean, we've got guys who can make shots. I, I, would be, I would be totally stunned if we didn't have a good year shooting the ball from beyond the, beyond the arc. I, I, I think we have guys who can make shots. But the reality of it is, you know, Justin, I, I want us to be built for the days when we don't make shots yeah. as well. You know, we had practice yesterday and we couldn't make one. You know, we just really struggled to make perimeter shots. And, and it's, it's kind of it, it's, it's kind of refreshing when you continue to see the ball bouncing off the rim to know that Derek and Oscar and Isaiah and, and Gabe and those guys are – waiting right there to be able to get their hands on it and do something with it as well. So, you know, I, I, I want us to be well-rounded. I mean, obviously we've, we've got to shoot the ball from the perimeter a lot better, but I mean, go back to the Oklahoma game. I mean, what we, we missed 22 shots inside of four feet. Right. Uh, that's hard to do, <laughs> you know, but we did it. And, and we, obviously you can't do that either. Yeah. And, you know, and in spite of shooting 22% from three, I think we win the Oklahoma game if we just make half of those 22 inside of four feet. 